Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. So today I figured I'd take you for a walk out to my garden and just show you what my medicinal herb bed looks like right now. It's just the beginning of June and there's a lot going on. So stay tuned right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Okay, so if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that in my garden I have a specific area called my medicinal herb bed area. And I try to showcase what's in it when I do videos. But I figured today I would dedicate this video to specifically that garden bed so I can show you what I have growing. In the description box there will be some links to some books that I highly recommend that are about herbs and their different uses and they're great resources. So let's head on out to the garden and I'll show you what my medicinal bed looks like at this point in time. Okay so this is my medicinal herb bed here. This sits against the south side of uh, the garage that we have here on the property and we have quite a few uh, perennials in here but then I also put some uh, annual herbs in here as well. So we'll start at the beginning of the bed. Um, I have two pots that have rosemary in them. I just got those from the market last week. Here in Zone 5B, Central Michigan, rosemary is considered an annual because it cannot withstand our cold winters. So I have to buy them every year. Next to the rosemary, I have some common thyme, and it's already gone to flower, this particular one. I have another common thyme somewhere else in the garden that hasn't flowered yet. But anyways, um, it's a wonderful herb, and when it flowers, uh, the pollinators really enjoy it. Then behind the common thyme, we do have some chamomile back here. I have quite a few different areas that I grow chamomile because the pollinators absolutely love it. So um, I just grow it wherever I can fit some in. It does self-seed very easily, so if you don't want it to grow um, all over your garden, you just pull out the seedlings that you don't want in the spring, and it's pretty easy to control. We also have uh, bee balm. I have two different varieties of bee balm. Uh, this one, I believe, is the purple one. And then I also have a red one. Um, so bee balm is very important to our garden. As well as lemon balm. That's very important. This tree here is a weed tree. Uh, we've tried getting rid of it multiple times, but we believe that the roots actually go under the foundation of the building. So we can't get rid of it. We just have to cut it down every year. But anyways, in front of that, I just planted some yellow cone flower, echinacea. Um, echinacea is generally known from the purple cone flower. So this is a different variety. This is brand new this year. Uh, last year it didn't make it, so we'll see if this one uh, makes it and regrows. Because echinacea is actually a perennial. Next to that we have mug, or excuse me, this is valerian. I almost said mugwort. <laughs> Now this is valerian and you can see that it's cut here and that's because it puts out wonderful beautiful uh, flower stalks. I, this thing gets um, all the way up to the roof of the building kind of like this plant is here. Um, but I find that valerian self seeds very easily too and it's not as easy to pull out of the ground. It sets a really deep root. So this year, to control it, I've cut off the flowering stalks so it does not self-seed. Right next to that we have, this is pastel yarrow. Yarrow is also an excellent herb. It's really pretty to look at. The, the dill kind of looking like fronds and the delicate flowers. Very, very beautiful plant. Next to that we have another echinacea. This one's a pink one. 
then we have some lemon thyme this is growing very very well when I first put it in two years ago it wasn't doing so good but it finally got established and now it's going to be a creeping ground cover because this plant has actually grown about four times the size it was when I put it in the ground two years ago and that's perfectly fine if it slowly creeps along the ground I'm happy with that it's beautiful and um, couldn't ask for just a more beautiful plant to kind of go against the other foliage in here next to this we also have the common garlic chive or I'm not sure if it's uh, the garlic or not I was been told it's the garlic but it's common chive it's the purple one and it's loaded with pollinators right now um, this actually self seeds very easily too so if you do not want it spreading because chive is hard to dig out of the ground as well um, as soon as the flowers are spent you need to cut those off before they develop the seed pods inside but um, very very beautiful plant the um, pollinators love them and I'm not harvesting any this year because I have two two quart containers full of dehydrated chives in my pantry so I'm just allowing the pollinators to, uh, to enjoy the flowers next to that we have some white whorehound Whorehound is what you generally find in your lozenges, your cough drops, and things like that. Um, it doesn't look too great right now because uh, it's been so hot. Um, but actually, this plant is doing very, very well. Like the lemon thyme here, the citrus thyme, this took a while to get established. It just was really, really slow to get established. This plant's about five years old and it's just finally started to to grow it grows kind of like a mint does as far as it has the the runners under the ground and it sets roots from the ones above ground but it's not as fast as mint not at all and it's easily controlled and then mixed in it I do have some echinacea that came from these plants here so this is some more echinacea this is hyssop and I'm hoping to get it harvested before it blooms. It has not bloomed yet, which is good because I have never been able to harvest this plant in the six years it's been here because I get it too late. You have to harvest this plant before it blooms. But it is a gorgeous plant. It smells very, very wonderful. And the, uh, the blooms are very beautiful too. It's a bluish kind of purple uh, flower to it. It's really nice. The pollinators love it. But like I said, I'm going to be harvesting about half of this plant uh, to store in my medicinal herb closet. Then next to that we have the other bee balm. This one is the uh, red bee balm, I believe, and uh, it's growing very well. Um, there will be a link in the video above here uh, for how to harvest this bee balm. I actually thinned it out and you can't really tell uh, that I thinned it out but bee balm because it grows so densely is uh, very susceptible to powdery mildew so I thinned this guy out when I harvested it uh, earlier and then buried here <laughs> this is a sage common sage I also just transplanted some uh, lamb's ear you can barely see them tucked in there in the mulch that's lamb's ear it's a very good medicinal plant so this plant isn't in my medicinal herb bed because it needs to be in a wetter sort of area this is the marsh mallow plant and there's a sage plant in front of it but it gets really really tall as well it gets up really really tall um, but this is an excellent plant to have as well very beautiful flowers the pollinators love it and it's just a great herb to have in your garden so those are the medicinal herbs that I grow in my garden the ones I did not mention or show you today are in some different areas of my yard we have uh, quite a few different mints growing I have catnip I have peppermint and spearmint growing um, and I also have borage that I just transplanted. I didn't show you that one. But um, I try to grow as many medicinal herbs as I can in this zone. Some of them I can't grow because they require a uh, more tropical uh, climate than what we have here. But I'm trying. One of the herbs that I'm trying to grow this year that's going to be a first, there's actually two of them, 
is moringa and also hops. Um, hops is a very good uh, herb to help uh, reduce stress and anxiety and when mixed with valerian and chamomile and those kind of things really helps you get a good night's sleep. So I'm trying to grow hops this year. We'll see how that goes. And the moringa is a superfood, so we're going to see how that goes. I will keep you guys updated as the gardening season goes along. It's quite hot and humid already this year, which is kind of uh, rare in the last couple of years for Michigan. We've been kind of cold. So it's good that we have the heat back, but at the same time, it's um, trying to get things planted before it gets really, really hot is definitely a challenge. So I hope that you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Like I said, I'm going to put in the description box below different books that I use for uh, learning about herbs and their different uses. I really, really highly recommend that you uh, get these books or some books like them. Do your research and see what herbs you can plant in your garden. And maybe not just for you, but for your pollinator friends too. Thanks for watching everybody. And I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time, bye-bye.